let us pray. Our Father, we thank you because thus far you have led us. We thank you for all that you have taught us and revealed in the word of truth since we came to this workers' retreat. And we thank you, Lord, because of the way you have ministered to us through the preaching, through our fellowship together, through the singing together, and through the special challenging songs of giving unto us from the choir. Lord, we pray that all the impact that this retreat is having in us will be permanent in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray that everything that you are accomplishing would be permanent in such a way that the effect will be seen in our various local churches and various uh, situations in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray, O oh Lord, that as we look into your word again at this time, that you enlighten us in the things we need to know. We bless your name because we believe that you will do it. Help us, Lord, so that effectively your word will come forth and we will understand the word and will be ready to be changed in the twinkling of an eye. Father, we pray that none of us will miss the rapture in Jesus' name. Amen. Teach us your word now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, First Thessalonians chapter 4, we're reading from verse 13 through to verse 18. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe, that Jesus died and rose again. Even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Tonight we come to consider an important aspect of the Word of God which deals with prophecy. When we talk about prophecy in the scriptures, there are written prophecies that had been given by the Lord himself through his prophets from years gone by. And there are a lot of these prophecies that are still to be fulfilled. And as we look at the trends of the world in which we live, we see that many of these things are in preparation or readiness to be fulfilled. And the two that we're considering tonight are very essential to eschatology, that is to the study of the last things. And they are the rapture, and the great tribulation. These things have not happened yet. The rapture has not taken place, but God has given us a foretaste of the rapture. In the sense that Enoch did not see death, he was taken away alive. A foretaste of the rapture. And also, Elijah did not see death, he was taken away without seeing death, with chariots and horses sent from heaven a foretaste of the rapture. So although the rapture has not taken place, we know that with God all things are possible. 
Not only that, because it has been done already. For those two, we know that it can be done for the whole church. You remember as students of the Bible too, that after Jesus rose from the dead, he appeared to his own disciples, and by many infallible proofs he showed unto them that it was he himself, the one that lived with them, the one that was crucified, the one that died, the one that was buried, and he rose from the dead. And should there be any kind of doubt in anyone that it is that same Jesus, we're told that Thomas was not there when he appeared unto his disciples. And Thomas said, I will not believe except I see the print of the nails. And I thrust my hand into his very side to know that it was that same Jesus. And then we're told the following week on this day, Jesus Christ appeared before them again. And without allowing Thomas to even talk about his doubt, he said, Come and reach forth your hand and touch and see that it is I myself. And Thomas overwhelmed by the infallible proof that this is the Christ. He shouted out, My Lord and my God. And then Jesus said, Because you have seen, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. But then, after appearing before them, 40 days, we're told that on that final day, he had just begun to give the final address to his own disciples. He had been speaking of things concerning the kingdom. Since he rose, but then after he had told them that ye shall receive power, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, then he told them, you'll be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and Judea and in Samaria. And to the uttermost part of the earth, we're told that immediately he said that he was caught up just before their eyes. And he went straight up, telling us that there is the possibility that the law of gravity will lose its hold upon people at that time, momentous time. When in a twinkling of an eye, the trumpet shall sound, and then the dead shall be raised, incorruptible, and he'll be taken up. After all, Jesus died, the first fruits among the dead. And even after his death and resurrection, he was taken up. Then it says, and we which are alive. After all, Enoch and Elijah, without passing through the veil or the channel of death, they were taken up. So for the dead that will rise up, we have the illustration, the example in Jesus. For those of us that will not see death and just be raised and, you know, lose the corruption and lose the force of gravity and lose the natural tendencies and the natural uh, binding force that is keeping us to the earth will be taken away. So all that is illustrated. What I'm telling you is the rapture is what is spoken about in the Bible and it's illustrated already. But it's not taking, it has not taken place. It is going to take place. Then we know of the great tribulation. The great tribulation again has not taken place. And yet, just like we have had a foretaste, a foreshadow of the rapture, even though the real final thing has not taken place, the same thing with the great tribulation. The great tribulation with a capital G and capital T has not taken place. But in the same way, we have got a foretaste that there will be a tribulation. We have got a foretaste. If you look at the history of the children of Israel, you have got a foretaste in tribulation. Not the great tribulation yet, but in tribulation. Because we are told they were in the land of Egypt. And that Egyptian bondage is described in the Bible as the iron furnace. And those people began to groan to the Lord because of the difficulty, the trial, the trouble, the tribulation they were passing through. Eventually, as they began to groan to the Lord, a deliverer was sent unto them. A foretaste and a foreshadow of the fact that the time of great tribulation is coming. And the children of Israel at that time of the great tribulation still future, they'll be crying unto the Lord. And as they cry, suddenly... The desire of the nations will come. Suddenly, he that will come will come, and he will not tarry, and he will deliver them out of that great tribulation. We've seen also the continuation of the foreshadowing, or the typifying, the, the type of the great tribulation. If you look at the history of the children of Israel, you'll see how they were under the Assyrians. 
in a very terrible bondage. Again, they cried unto the Lord, and the Lord raised up a deliverer. It is still a foreshadowing of the great tribulation that will come. That a time will come when the children of Israel, they will be disappointed by their league or by their agreement, by their covenant with the Antichrist in the middle of the week, according to the prophetic writing in Daniel. And because of that abomination that is described in Daniel, that will come right into the temple, the Jews will begin to cry unto the Lord. And then God will send a deliverer, that is Jesus Christ, their Messiah. And then you see that they were also under the Midianites. You remember when God called Gideon, he says, Thou man of valor, arise and go and deliver the people. And he said, How shall I deliver the people? Because I'm the least in my family. And my family is nothing to be reckoned with with the children of Israel. But once again, the Lord delivered the people. And as you go on in the history of the children of Israel, you come on to the New Testament times. And we're told that in AD 70, according to the words of Jesus Christ, when the disciples of Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 24, they showed him the temple, and they showed him all the stately, the magnificence of the temple, and he said, see ye all these things, not one stone will be left upon the other, because everything will be destroyed. And then in later part of that verse, verse 25, he said, and I told you before, and we're told in history that General Titus came 70 AD and he wiped out all those people and many of the people died. Then were they crying unto the Lord. Since that time, they had been scattered. And as they were scattered in different parts of the world, then we, you see that Jesus Christ had also prophesied that when you see that fig tree budding, then you know that the time is very near. And if you are a student of church history, you will know that from 70 AD, many, many years ago, until 1948, just very recently, all those children of Israel, they were scattered abroad. But then 14th of May, in 1948, they became a nation once again. And you would have seen, as they became a nation once again, you see now all that we're reading about the Jewish people. You see the power of God being manifested again. Although they have not reached up to the level that Zechariah talked about, that they will see him, whom they appears, and they would say, where did you sustain all this injury? And they will say, in the house of my friend, they pierced me. And they will mourn for him, and they will look up to him, that they are pierced and the one that they are tormented, or that the one that had gone through suffering so much. Although that has not tricked their place, but you have seen already that they have been gathered together into a nation. And the Lord said, when you see these things happening like that, you know that the coming of the Lord is very near. How near? Close at the door. And then it says that when you see such a thing, you will now have to remember the time of Noah. Because as it was at the time of Noah, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. Until that day that Noah entered into the ark, and it came upon them unaware. So shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. So then you see that all these things, they have a kind of a foretaste, or they have a kind of fulfillment. But the real thing, the final thing, the capstone, is eventually going to be fulfilled. And this is what we're talking about today, the rapture and the great tribulation. Now, there are many people that know a little about the rapture. But then, they do not know, they do not understand the order of events. And there is confusion in the minds of many people as to when will the rapture take place? Who are the people that will be qualified to go in the rapture? And when they have gone, when we've gone away, the church has gone away in the rapture, what will be happening to the rapture church? That is, to the church that had been caught up in the sky, in the air to be with the Lord. And while the church is over there, what will be happening in the world over here? That thing that will be happening in the world over here, for how many years will it be? And at the end of that period, when the world would have gone through indescribable suffering, what will then happen immediately after that? You see, there is confusion in the minds of many people concerning eschatological studies, that is, concerning the things that are yet to happen at the end of the age. And that's why it's important for us to look at this very, very well. There will be three points I want to bring to your attention. Number one, the rapture of the true saints. 
Not just the rapture, but the rapture of the true saints. Now, already I've told you about uh, the foretaste and the foreshadowing. That is uh, a kind of illustration for the rapture. I told you about Enoch. I told you about Elijah. I told you about the Lord Jesus Christ. And that tells you already that those who are going to be raptured, they will not be the ordinary churchgoer. They will not be the run of the mere Bible carrier. They will not be that every Dick and Harry that will be raptured. But there will be people like Enoch and people like Elijah and people like the Lord Jesus Christ. Those who are Christ-like, they have experience and the fact that they have received Jesus Christ into their lives. And then because of that, they are living lives that are conformable to the very life of Christ. We'll talk about that later, the rapture of true saints. Number two, the great tribulation. The great tribulation. Not just uh, ordinary tribulation, not small tribulation, not a little tribulation, not even a kind of tribulation that, you know, you see now with a small T, because, you know, Jesus Christ said, be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. In the world, you will have tribulation. That tribulation is with a little small T. And it is for a little time. And it is a localized kind of tribulation. It's the kind of tribulation you may be going through. And I may not even know. And you may be going through and you'll still be smiling saying, Praise the Lord. The Lord is still on the throne. He will see me through. I know I'm a child of God. I know He will never forsake me. I know all these tribulations that are surrounding me now, they are nothing because the light affliction that we go through, they are nothing to be compared with the weight of glory that will come upon us. All that is little, small, insignificant tribulation. But we're talking about the great tribulation. It's going to be a special period in the history of the world. It's going to be a special period in the history of the children of Israel. The Great Tribulation. Great because it is going to cover a great area of the world. Great because it is going to be higher, greater than any other trouble, any other tribulation, anybody, any group of people has ever gone through. In fact, Jesus said, if the days had not been shortened, no flesh shall be saved. It will be so terrible that people that are living at that time, they will pray during the day for the night to come. They will pray during the night that the day should come. They will pray for death and they will not see death. That's point number two, the great tribulation. Point number three, qualifications for rapture and escape from the great tribulation. Qualifications for the rapture. If a person is going to take part in that rapture, what qualifications will he have? And then they escape. You are qualified to go in the rapture and to escape the great tribulation. Before I get into all the references we are going to read, you will need to understand that the rapture takes place before the great tribulation. Very, very important. Very, very important. The rapture takes place before the great tribulation. You see, Lot came out of Sodom before the fire fell on Sodom and Gomorrah. Noah entered into the ark of safety and security before the fountains of the deep and before the heavens were opened. Water flowed from beneath, rain and water from above and to swallow up that generation. But Noah had entered into safety and so shall it be at the end of the age. The saints will be taken away first before the great tribulation will come now let us think about the points one by one number one the rapture of true saints let's um, try to uh, examine and explain the words we have in this uh, subtitle the word rapture the word rapture is coming from the La a latin word and it just means being caught away being taken away being caught off or caught up. Caught not C-U-T, but C-A-U-G-A-T. Caught to catch. Caught up. And so rapture is being taken away from this world alive. And then going to be with the Lord. Then it says it is the rapture of the true saints. Not the fake, the false, the hypocritical ones, the phony. But it is the rapture of the true saints. Who are saints? Well, saints are not statues. 
You sometimes uh, find in a particular church building, you'll find a statue of uh, maybe Augustine or, or Peter or for, you know, whoever, and you'll say, that is saint such and such. And some idol worshipping church goer will go, into, will go to that place and kneel down before Saint Augustine and Saint Peter and kiss the feet of Saint Peter. Now it's not block, it's not marble that we call saint, it's the people that are following the Lord we call saints. Have you read in your Bible when Paul the Apostle says he's writing to the saints in Rome? That is those people that are still alive, not the ones that are dead, not the ones that we don't know anything about, but the ones that are still alive, writing to the saints at Rome. And so the saints we're talking about here are the people that were sinners before. They came to Christ. And as they came to Christ, their sins were washed away. They were cleansed in the blood of the Lamb. And so, that cleansing in the blood of the Lamb made them to be saints unto the Lord. Now, the rapture of such saints. In John chapter 14, John chapter 14, reading from verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, if it were not so. I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. That is uh, talking about the rapture. The Lord spoke to his disciples. He wasn't speaking to the generality of people. He wasn't speaking to the mixed multitude. He wasn't speaking to every dick and hurry that are tasted of the bread he multiplied, of the fish he multiplied. He was not talking about the people that at the brink of the Christian faith. He was not talking to the people that were at the periphery, at the outside of the kingdom of God. He was talking to these people that have owned him as Lord and as King and as Savior. And he said, let not your heart be troubled. If that heart had been given to Jesus Christ, if that heart has been washed in the blood of the Lamb, if that heart has been converted and changed and transformed, let not that heart be troubled. You believe in God already? Believe also in me. Now when he said believe also in me, it doesn't mean that they have not believed in him. They have believed in him, but he was saying believe also in me and believe all the words I've told you. Believe everything I've told you. Then he said, in my father's house are many mansions. There are some people that, you know, knock on your door and they have some papers to give you. And then they are all for argument every time. And they, you know, start the arguments by saying, do you think that uh, you are going to go to a place they call heaven? And if you say yes, they will laugh. They will say that is why we came to you. To give you the watchtower. And to give you all these uh, things. to so see the people that are going to that place, only 144,000, those people are there and they are secured already. That if you know what is happening, it is this, our dusty land, you are going to live forever. Can you imagine that? That they say that it is this dusty place we are going to be. That there is no other place to go. They are liars. They don't know what they are talking about. You know what Jesus said? He said, in my father's house are many mansions. And when Jesus said many, that is many. My father's house are many mansions. We're not going to be here forever. We're going to go to a particular place. You know what the Bible says? It says there's a better country. And the foundations is a deeper, is a greater, is a better foundation. He said the people that have come out of their own country, if they had been mindful of the country they came out from, they would have had reason to go back. But now they declare unto us that as pilgrims and strangers in this world, they seek a better country. And I thank God for you, you are seeking that better country. It says, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, why would I deceive you all these years? Why would I allow you to be following me and be talking about heaven and be talking about that better country, my father's house? I know it is true. In fact, it says, I go to prepare a place for you. And that place, 
brothers and sisters, it's indescribable. We have no words to be able to describe the place for you. As you see in Revelation chapter 21, John the beloved, he said, And I saw the bride at dawn for the bridegroom, and I saw the new Jerusalem coming out of heaven, and coming like this, and then he begins to give the thousands of miles, and the breadth, and the length, and the height. And he said, There's so much at dawn for the husband. And then he talks about the gates of Jasper, the gates of all the precious stones. And then he says, Blessed are the people that are able to get into that place and i praise the lord because here we are getting ready and getting prepared that we're going to get to that place and i pray we will not miss it in jesus name and then it says and if i go and prepare a place for you i will come again i will come again it says they will come and we know that jesus christ is the truth the personification of the truth he cannot lie he says he's coming again and he will come again and then it says that where i am there ye may be also where i am there ye may be also he's telling us that the time is coming when he will come to take us and he will come to take us unto himself now we have read about first thessalonians chapter 4 verses 13 to 18. let's look at some points there first thessalonians chapter 4 from verse 13 but i will not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope you see at the time of paul the apostle and in our own time too there were there were times that believers died and then the believers were so sorrowful as if so and so is gone we will not see him again and he's gone just like that. And we remember this, and we remember this about him or about her. And then Paul the Apostle says, Don't be sorrowful like that. It's just for a short time. Don't you remember that the Bible says that a thousand years with the Lord is like one day. If a thousand years with the Lord is like one day, then I think that 50 years will not be more than just like about two minutes. And then it means that about 20 years will be like a few seconds. And we're soon going to see them. And it is not going to be long when, in fact, the, the dead will rise from the dead. And they will be the first people to rise. And then we which are alive, we're going to be caught up together with them. It says, for if we believe that Jesus, is, that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. If we believe, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, you know, he's talking to the church. Because you cannot be a part of the church without believing that Jesus died and rose again. Do you know what the Bible says? That if you will confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died and rose from the dead the third day, that you will be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Of course you believe, if you are a child of God, that Jesus rose and that Jesus died and he rose again. It says in 1 Corinthians that if Jesus be not raised, then our preaching is vain and your faith is vain. If Jesus is not risen from the dead, then let us eat and drink for tomorrow we shall die. We're just like all the other animals and we shall die. But it says that we confirm to you by the word of the Lord that Jesus died and he rose again. And he said on that basis, on the certainty of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we also we will rise if we die, and we will go with the Lord, where even if we have not died in verse 15, for this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, by the word of the Lord, not by the supposition of men, this we say unto you, not by the speculations of theologians, this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent, shall not proceed, shall not hinder, shall not come before them which are asleep. It's telling us about the ordering. You count one before you count two. It's telling us that this will happen before that will happen. That's why it says we will not proceed, we will not prevent, we will not come before them that are asleep. There is a people that are asleep in Christ that will rise up for It is then we who are alive in the Lord will be caught up together to meet with them in the air. Verse 16, for the Lord himself, not an angel, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. With the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise 
first. The dead in Christ. Not all people that are buried by the archbishop and the bishop. Because you see the Bible says, and I told you earlier in another message, it is not all of Israel that is Israel. It is not, that is not circumcision that is outward in the flesh. But that is circumcision. That is circumcision in the spirit, in the heart, whose praise is of the Lord. You see, there were many people that identified with Jesus Christ, but he did not commit himself unto them because he knew the hearts of all men. It's only the people that die in Christ. Those people that have record in heaven that they are the children of God. Those people that before their death, they were faithful. No, we don't know everybody like that. If we hear that somebody has been in our church and he dies, all we can tell, oh, we say sister so-and-so. We say brother so-and-so. But only God really knows whether that individual was in the real sense born again, in the real sense living a holy life, in the real sense living according to the word of God, in the real sense faithful unto God, in everything, in the real sense, whether that person was full of Christ, in Christ indwelling in him, and living the life that he ought to live, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet it is not I but Christ that lives in me. It is only the Lord who knows whether that individual as Christ living in him and is living a life that is pleasing unto God. You see, when we come and we're going to conduct the funeral ceremony, oh, we say brother so and so. We say sister so and so. Well, in our understanding that's all we can say. Because we're human beings and because they openly, outwardly identified with the church. But you know, when that trumpet shall sound, the Lord has record of the true saints. The Lord has record of the people that were actually living the life that is, you know, the life of a child of God. You know, there are times that you'll find a lady in the church and will call sister so-and-so, sister so-and-so. And, -so. and um, they were planning to get married. And, you know, outwardly, it appears that sister so-and-so is a real sister. But you see, they had gone to do something uh, before the real wedding. And uh, they, she was pregnant. And so that pastor will not hear. So that region overseer will not hear. So that this one will not hear. In trying to commit abortion, she landed in the hospital. And instead of at that time, at that time repenting, at that time saying, Oh God, I don't know the last sickness. I don't know the last thing that will come upon me before I leave this world. Have mercy upon me. I'm a wretched sinner. I've gone astray. And all the people that came to visit her in the hospital, instead of telling them, Pray for me. I've gone astray. Pray for me. I'm backsliding. She will not do that. She will just be saying, Oh God, heal me now. I am suffering too much. Even though I committed the, this, uh, I tried this abortion and the thing is like this now. Oh God, am I going to die like this? And before you know what is happening, she died. God knows how she died and what killed her. She knows and she knew what killed her. We are ignorant. Oh, we cry. We say our beloved sister, our wonderful sister. Nobody like her in our local church. And then we call all the members together and we sing all the songs we can sing. We pray all the prayers we can pray. Not praying for her because we feel that, you know, she's secured with the Lord. And we even use her as an encouragement. We'll, we'll say now, you see, our sister, how she served the Lord. Our sister, how she was faithful. How many of you did not know her being very zealous in the house fellowship? How many of you did not know her being very active in the things of the Lord? In fact, we'll then remember some of the great things that she did when she was still in the Lord. And we'll say, you know, she did this and she did this and she did that. And we encourage all the other people. We we'll say, now she has gone. She is now, she, no more temptation, no more problem now. We don't know, we don't know. No more problem now, no more trouble now. She is now resting in the bosom of Jesus Christ. I hope all of you will pray. Let me die the death of the righteous and let my end be like his. This is our beloved sister. Although we are going to put her in the grave now, we are not forsaking her, but it is just the body we are putting there. The spirit and the soul, they are now in the presence of the almighty God and now she what she what we are not able to see the angels and abraham and isaac and jacob and all the prophets what we are not able to see look now our sister is already seeing them what we preached about that we have not tested our sister already now is seeing all those things and it is not true it is not true you see it is not what you see outwardly it is the internally inward life that person died in abortion you know where she has gone but you know because we didn't know of course of course 
the so-called husband will know. And all the time you people are saying she has gone to heaven, the husband will be saying, this is my wife. And because of the thing that we did, why did we try that abortion? Why didn't we report ourselves to the overseer? Even if we're disciplined, look at it, now this woman has gone like this. And he'll be cold. You will think it is only because of the sorrow of losing that woman. It is not just that sorrow. It is the guilt of what we plan together. The abortion we plan together has taken the life of this woman and has gone away like that. And he might even live much of his life in sorrow. But you see, when we talk about the people that will be raptured, these are the people that are living right. It says the dead in Christ, the dead in Christ, they will rise forth. Then in verse 17, then it says we which are alive. We which are alive. That's not talking of the mixed multitude in the physical, in the visible church. It's talking about those who are alive in Christ. Alive in righteousness. Alive with new life. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. To meet the Lord in the air. Do you notice that language? To meet the Lord in the air. At the time of the rapture, Jesus' feet will not touch the Mount Olivet. That will be at the second coming, the final coming. But at the time of the rapture, when, you hear, when that trumpet will sound, then will be quickened, will be changed, will put, corruption will put on the incorruptible. And then, in a twinkling of an eye, will be taken up. And it says at that time, he'll be in the air waiting for us. And then his power, like a great magnet, will magnetize us and we are gone. And you know that it is not every metal, it is not everything that looks so lead that has the magnetic force you see when you have a big magnet and you have a little nail there and a big nail there and then a lump of iron there and a, maybe a blade over there iron of different sizes you'll find that that uh, you know you just put that big magnet here and all those metals different sizes different shapes and different kinds of, uh, of uh, tools, they all come to that big magnet and they get up and that they are magnetized. It's like that with the Lord Jesus Christ, it will be in the air. And if that property in him, that quality in him, that nature in him is also in you. Although you see the nail is different from the blade and the blade is different from the knife and the knife is different from the scissors and all those things are different in shape in size in tool in the things we are using them for as they have that property in them they are all magnetized to that big magnet although we christians were different in sizes we're different in name we're different in function we're different in role we're different even in understanding we're different in talent but if you have that magnetic quality within you if you have that nature of Christ within you, you will see that as Christ is there, because of that quality of righteousness and holiness and new life in you, you'll be magnetized unto the Lord. That's what he's saying here. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. It says, wherefore, comfort one another with these words. To the saints, rapture is a word of comfort. To the sinners, rapture is a word of terror. You see, for those who are children of God, we comfort one another with these words. But I want you to understand when the rapture takes place. You only, you only need to think of a situation in the world now to be able to understand it will be comforting, comforting to the children of God. Uh, let me uh, illustrate that to you. For example, you may have a child of God that is sick, a child of God that is poor, a child of God that appears to be hungry, a child of God that does not have the necessities of life. And then the trumpet sounds, and immediately all that poverty is left behind, all the hunger is left behind. And you know where he's going? Immediately we're raptured like that, he goes to take part in the uh, marriage supper of the Lamb. Where Jesus Christ said, he will tell his servants to sit down, and he will serve them himself. The Lord Jesus Christ will become not just our Savior, but also our steward. He begins to serve us, and he will say, welcome into the kingdom. Because you have overcome, and because 
because you use those five talents, take five cities or ten cities. And because you use that one talent effectively, take one city or take this other one. It is there, will be giving us reward. It is comforting to the believer that the rapture is going to take place. Let's turn the table around and let's see what will happen to the folks in the world. And let's see what will happen to the people that are not really the children of God. Well, Jesus Christ even tells us that two will be sleeping on the bed. One will be taken and the other shall be laid. You see, when the rapture takes place, those who are really in Christ, they will be taken away all of a sudden in a twinkling of an eye. But you know the world in which we live now, the world in which we live now is a complicated world complicated world in the fact that in the sense that if you go to our hospitals you will see the complications you will see all those gadgets and all the things that are being used over there if you look at the airport you will see the complication because you see when uh, you have a pilot that will just enter into that place and then push some buttons and then the that big gigantic thing is off the ground far up in the air with a particular pilot you see we live in a complicated world now the consequence is this if the pilot happens to be a saint a child of god and it's having is you know up in the air and you have the rapture taking place and immediately because god will not say i will let him land before the rapture will take place immediately the rapture takes place the pilot is gone and you tell me what happens to all the people that are there in that plane. Rapture is a word of comfort to the saints. It's a word of terror to the sinners. You show me in the hospital, here is a doctor. And he's operating on a particular person. And already has caught the thing open. And while everything is being caught open, the rapture takes place. That doctor is a true saint, a true child of God. The doctor is gone. The one that is, uh, that is uh, blown open there is still, you know, with the pain. Going to wake up now into the terror of seeing all the intestines out or the driver is a child of God and there are all these passengers the moment the trumpet sounds like this and the driver is taken away and you know the vehicle has been going in full speed here is another vehicle over there and it's just going and just about the time that that driver would have made a turn swapped a little bit so that it will not collide with the other vehicle the rapture takes place the driver is gone and those people go straight like that it's going to be calamity for the world it's going to be terror for the world it's going to be indescribable suffering and agony for the world and that is why i plead with you if you are not ready for the rapture yet get ready tonight because we do not know when the trumpet shall sound it may be at morn it may be at noon when the lord will come and there will be a shout and the lord will say come home children because it is enough and we've done enough and then we just go like that and we will be with the lord but the people that are not serious for the gospel the people that are not serious we're following after the lord you will find that they are left behind and you might be one of those people in that plane one of those people in that vehicle one of those people at that machine one of those people that you'll be on lucky apart from the fact that you will not go in the rapture if you are not a christian you might get into that kind of accident like that there will be many accidents you know you ought to know that there will be many many accidents many things happening when the saints are taken up just in in a twinkling of an eye like that and i pray for you that you will not be in the world at that time now for the people that don't even have that kind of accident and they manage to remain in the world after we have gone after the saints have gone there will be the time of the great tribulation and who has which poet as language and which writer as language which scribe has the language which journalist has the language and which orator has the language to be able to describe to you the agony and the suffering and the pain that will take place in this world for the people that go through the great tribulation as i read some of the passages to you it is uh, shocking and it is it is very pain it it even pains your heart as you are, as you are reading the account it is going to be a terrible thing and i pray that you will not be in the world at such a time in jesus name in first corinthians chapter 15 first corinthians chapter 15 and verse 51 and verse 52 first corinthians 15 then verses 51 and 52 behold i show you a mystery behold i show you a mystery whenever you read anything like that in the new testament a mystery is something that had been hidden from the people of the past generation but now revealed to the people of this church age 
reveal to the people of this church dispensation. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. We shall all be changed in a moment. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. It says, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Do you know that there will be no time to make restitution at that time? Do you know that there will be no time to repent and say, Oh Lord, the rapture is taking place. Brother so and so is gone. Sister so and so is gone. Let me, oh Lord, uh, get ready uh, so that I will not uh, miss the rapture. It will be in a moment. In a twinkling of an eye. And I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, Jesus said, He that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. You see, as we had in the morning, there will be temptation. But temptation is not sin. But when you yield to that temptation, then that is sin. And there are people that have yielded to temptation. Can you imagine as we're here now? You've been here, some of you have been here since Monday. And you have the chance to have repented if you have gone into sin. You have the chance to make right your life if things have gone wrong. But message after message, message after message, and you're still saying, I will repent. I will think about it. I will settle it eventually because if I pray seriously now and I begin to pray fervently and uh, I may not be able to control myself and I begin to alter some things to the Lord while we're here together, other people might hear and they will say, ah, ah, so and so, is she a backslider? Why is she praying like that? So and so, is she gone astray? Has she uh, offended the Lord? Has she forsaken the Lord? Why is she praying like that? Because of that shame, you are still keeping it to yourself. But I'm telling you that when the rapture is going to take place. And who knows when the rapture is going to take place? We don't know. Because it will happen any time. And it can happen any time from now. Now, there's no time to, uh, to go into all the things that have taken place as Jesus Christ has said. But if I were just to refresh your memory, when he talks about the famine, don't you know that half of the world is not able to feed itself now? As he talks about drought, haven't you heard the news in southern part of Africa, in Zambia, in Zimbabwe, in Mozambique, and in Angola, in a lot of the countries? Don't you know in uh, Zaire, and don't you know in many countries now, and apart from Africa, don't you know what is going on even in the West? Yes, there are, there are droughts. Don't you know about the earthquakes? In the last 50 years, we've had more earthquakes than the whole world has had before the, in all the generation before 50 years ago. It's telling us something. The children of God, the time is almost up. The Lord is about to come. And if you are going to get ready, this is the time to get ready. And as you think about the false prophets, because Jesus Christ said, many will come in my name, even declaring that they are Christ. Have you not seen that in our country here? Have you not seen that in Nigeria? Have you not seen that in West Africa? Have you not seen that in southern part of Africa? When it says there will be false prophets and they will deceive many. Before you can get one true prophet today, you have hundreds of false prophets. And when you think about that, you think about all the things that Jesus said. And Jesus said, children of God, be very vigilant when you see these things happening. Know that the rapture and know that the time of the things I spoke about, they are very near at hand, very much near at the door. And so it is very important for us to know that the Lord can come anytime. And it will be in the moment, in a moment, a tweaking of an eye, that the trumpet will sound. And then those who are ready, they will go with the Lord. And the people that are not ready, they are going to be left behind. Now, after the church has gone like that, when the church is taken away, and you are in the azure above, A-Z-U-R-E, you are in the azure above, and you are just like that with the Lord in the marriage supper of the Lamb. Because the wife had made herself ready, has put on the white linen. For the white linen is the righteousness of the saints. And blessed are they who are qualified to come to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Will rejoice with the Lord. That's Revelation chapter 19. What will be happening when the children of God, the raptured saints, the people of God who have gone up with the Lord, when they are with the Lord like that, what will be happening in the world here below? That leads us to the second point, which is the great tribulation. The Great Tribulation. I told you earlier that it is called the Great Tribulation because it will be great. And when we talk about tribulation, Israel will understand. 
to see we who are uh, the children of God now in Africa here, many times when we talk about tribulation, we don't understand. Because, you see, many of the things we read about in the Bible, it is surprising to us. But for the children of Israel, it was not like that. Now, uh, I traced with you a little bit what had been happening to the children of Israel from the early time of their history. You've seen the, uh, you've seen the Egyptian bondage, the iron ponies that they went through. And you, you have seen that it is like real fire coming upon them. Not only that you have seen in the case of Assyria beseeching Samaria and beseeching the children of Israel. You know, it says that they were, and they were shut in. Nobody could go out and nobody will come in. And because of the prophecy that had been given, Moses told them in um, Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 51 to verse 53, he said, if you go away from the Lord and you go to serve the idols and you go to join yourself with the people of the land, he said from verse 15 that these will come upon you. There will be curse in the house, there will be curse in the street, and there will be, confu there will be confusion, there will be consummation, there will be inflammation, there will be, it, there will be boils, there will be a lot of things. And then in verse 52, 53, he began to tell them, it will become so serious that even those who are delicate among you will begin to take your own children and roast and, and eat and boil and eat. You see, the children of Israel, they had gone through tribulation. And I'm sure you remember in the time of Elisha when somebody cried, a woman cried to the king and said, King, oh king, save me. And he says, where will I save you? Into the barn or what do I have to provide for you? And then she said, he said, what is your problem? He said, I and this other woman, we agreed that uh, first of all, because of the famine, because of the difficulty, we will eat my son first and then we ate my son. And then the second day I said, now bring your own and she is hiding her own. That was tribulation. And the king of Israel said, what is all this that God do so to me if the head of Elisha is not taken away today? And then while they were coming to Elisha, you may know the story. It says, this, this evil is from the Lord. A time of real terrible things that the Lord even told them that you will, you will eat the dung of animals. And they even began to sell the dung of the animals. So yes, the new tribulation, the new trouble. But I'm telling you something, the tribulation that is coming, it has no comparison. History tells us that when, you know, at the time of the Second World War, that when the, the Jews were being killed, millions of them were killed. And they were killed in very agonizing, terrible ways. That is tribulation. And as you read, if you are able to read the history of the suffering of the children of Israel, they have gone through a lot in their history. Real trouble, real trial, real traumatic situations, and real tribulation. But then Jesus said, the one that is coming, you cannot compare it with anything that has taken place before. That is why, even if it were just for you to avoid the great tribulation, do everything you can do. Do everything you can do so that you will escape the great tribulation. You know, sometimes uh, when I move around and I see some churches where they are not teaching their people holiness and they are not teaching their people how to live righteous life, I think as I read some of the passages, uh, you know, that we are going to read tonight, I think all these pastors who are teaching their people and they are playing with religion and it is only drumming and dancing and only drinking Fanta and drinking Coke that they call the Lord's Supper. And, uh, you know, doing this and that, I shake my head and I say, it will be terrible on that day. It will be terrible on that day. You know, brothers and sisters, I pray you will not be around at that time. That you will escape that great, 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 great tribulation. Uh, you see, you, will, you cannot understand just by reading it. The only thing is that you must not go through it. It will be a terrible time. Look at what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, we're looking at it from verse 21. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world. Such as was not since the beginning of the world to that time, nor no, nor ever shall be. You see, it says that time is a special time. The time of the great tribulation, great suffering, great agony great evil coming upon the people you may ask why will it be like that well a number of reasons number one the church will have been taken away do you know what the bible says ye are the salt of the earth and ye are the light of the world and when the salt has been taken away there will be pollution there will be corruption 
Not only that, when the light has been taken away, there will be darkness. Last night, you were listening to setting the captives free. And you listen to how people get involved with all these demonic activities. And when you listen to some of those activities of demons who said, What? How about this? And how about this? But I tell you, at that time when the light of the world is taken away and the salt of the earth is taken away, it will be the day for demons to exercise all their cruelty, all their evil, all the satanic nature within them. They'll just fill the land without any control, without any restraint. Because to see the church would have been taken away. Not only that, why will the great tribulation be the thing that it is? Because the wrath of God will be poured upon the world. There is no time to read, but you can read on your own Revelation chapter 6, chapter 7, all through to chapter the beginning of chapter 19. And you will see the wrath of God being poured away as this veil was opened. And the wrath of God was poured upon the place. And the, and the third part of the sea became blood. And the fish that was in them all died and began to sink. And the third part of the sheep that had been on those seas, they were destroyed. And all those travelers by sea, you see all those evil things happening to them. You come to Revelation chapter 9 and it says the bottomless pit will be opened. And the locusts will come out. And the locusts will be commanded not to eat grass or any green thing. But they will be stinging men. And their sting is like that of the scorpion. That no penicillin injection or any kind of of injection will be able to get rid of it says that the pain of that a locust biting them will continue for five months they will seek death and they will not find it why is it that the great tribulation will be a terrible time number one because the salt of the earth has been taken away the light of the world has been taken away number two because the wrath of god will be poured upon the world number three because the antichrist will be in the world at that time and if you read daniel chapter 7 chapter 8 and chapter 9 you, and uh, and chapter 11 you will see the rules of uh, the antichrist coming upon the people he would have made an agreement a covenant a league with the children of israel at the middle of the of the week that is at the middle of seven years he will break that covenant and because of the breaking of that covenant there will be terrible things happening if you now go to revelation chapter 13 it tells you that at such a time they, they will be a mark the mark of the beast 666 and the people that take that mark are the only people that will be able to go to the market and buy anything and buy any food and if you don't take that mark then you will not be able to buy or sell you will not be able to have any food at all and if anybody takes that mark his doom is sealed forever it's going to be a terrible time terrible because the church is gone terrible because god comes out of his place and he comes to fight against the children of men terrible because the antichrist in all his cruelty and wickedness and power will come to afflict the people in the world and so you see it from all those three directions and you see the agony you see the suffering and you see the tribulation that will come upon the people of the world at such a time that's why jesus christ said for then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world now when you think of what has been since the beginning of the world and you take the words of jesus christ serious and he said such as has not been has not been since the beginning of the world it is going to actually be a terrible time in jeremiah chapter 30 jeremiah chapter 30 reading from verse 5 all through to verse 7 for that, for thus says the Lord, we have heard a voice of trembling and of fear and not of peace. Ask ye now and see whether a man does travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his sons to his loins as a woman in travail? And all faces are turned into paleness. Alas, for that day, uh, alas, for that day is, is great so that none is like it it is even the time of jacob's trouble it is the time of jacob's trouble but he referring to jacob shall be saved out of it now when it says uh, jacob shall be saved out of it don't say ah well if jacob will be saved out of it then there is hope for me well understand when it says jacob shall be saved out of it you have to see all the other scriptures in isaiah and the scripture also in uh, Zechariah, and the scriptures too in Romans. 
And it tells us that all Israel shall be saved. But when it says all Israel shall be saved, that is all the Israel that remain alive. All the Israel that will be able to remain till the end of the great tribulation. And another part says just one third of them will remain. Because there will be so much suffering, so much pain. In fact, they will begin to cry for their Messiah that they deserve the nations will come. Because of that, you realize that when it says Israel shall be saved, it shall be saved out of it. It is only a part of them, the people that have not died, that will be saved out of them. You say, how about the uh, gentle world? Let's say, uh, you know, there are people here today and uh, they miss the rapture. And when they, once they know that the rapture has taken place, and uh, I've told you already, the rapture can take place anytime. And you know, there are times uh, in days, our short lives, where it appears that some people thought the rapture was taking place. Uh, you know, there was a time that uh, something happened just to, God was just uh, wanting to warn an individual. He was in the room like this, and there was another person in the, in the sitting room, and uh, something happened, not rapture actually, uh, but uh, he didn't see that uh, brother. And he went to the back of the house, and he went to all the rooms and went everywhere. Where is brother so-and-so? He went outside to see, and brother so-and-so was not there. God just arranged it in such a way like that, and the brother became afraid and said, as the rapture happened, as the rapture taking place, and uh, he began to pray immediately and he settled what he had to settle with the Lord. And then after that, he saw that brother. And then his mind came down and said, ah, You are still there? <laughs> I prayed my eyes out already. I thought that uh, you were gone in the rapture. You see, that was just warning. But you see, when the rapture takes place and these people are left here, it's going to be terrible. There may be people that will say, I will endure. I will endure. Well, you know, today, if you try to fast one day, by 3 o'clock, 3.30 and 4 o'clock, you are looking at the time and you say, am I going to be able to get through? Because it's hard to fast. And then if you want to go three days without water and without food, by the time you go to the second day and by the time you are getting to the third day, it appears you don't know whether you are going to be able to sail through that third day. But at that time of the Great Tribulation, you will not be able to get food to buy. There will be a number. And right now, technology has developed in overseas to the point that they can put something on you that can only be read by the computer. To the point that you don't have to carry passbook, that you can just carry a little uh, card like this and you slot it in and it gives you uh, the detail of what money you have there, what money you don't have there. The people of the world are getting ready. To the point that they can put that mark on you and then you'll be able, if you are going to, they say, have you got your mark? You have not got your mark. And then they can test by all their gadgets and everything. But I thank God that when that thing will be fully developed, I will not be here. And you need to pray that you will escape, you will not be here. But if it happens that you are here, it's going to be terrible. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says, if you have run with horsemen, if you have run with ordinary people, they worry you. What will you do when you now come to run with horsemen? If in the ordinary time you are troubled, what will you do at the swelling time of the tide of Jordan? If at this time with little persecution, with little trouble, with little uh, tribulation, with little, little things that are taking place, you easily get discouraged. What are you going to do at that time? No counselor will be around. At least the true ones. No pastor will be around the true ones. And even the Bible, you will, how will you understand today if you read the Bible on your own? It is when you come into the fellowship, you come to the congregation, that you're able to understand the real meaning, the enriching meaning of the word of God. At that time, it will not be free. You will not be free to have just any church anywhere. You will be having congregation like this. The messengers of the Antichrist will come in and say, stop all that. How many of you have got your marks? And they begin to check up with their gadgets and the people that have not got that mark, they will beat them mercilessly before they send them to go and get the mark. And if you say you are not going to take the mark, it is going to be suffering. It is going to be suffering. And these people of the world, they know how to torture people. The only thing is that you should not be here at that time. Now, why should people remain here? And what makes them remain here? Because of a little restitution. They have to make restitution with about 5,000 cities. They, can, they don't want to do it because of the shame. 
not because they don't have the money but because of the shame or it is that uh, when you were planning your marriage you had already met one another uh, before the real wedding if i go to make restitution i confess to our pastor they may stop me uh -uh, stopping you what is that that is nothing compared with the great tribulation other people say if i don't give bribes how will i be able to get job ah, if you give bribe and you get job what if the rapture takes place and you don't go the suffering that will be taking place in the world at that time the only thing is that you as a child of god you should not be here and i pray you will not be here in jesus name well already some of the passages i should have read to you i've already mentioned them and i've already quoted them as i was speaking and i want to go to point number three which is qualification for the rapture and escape from the great tribulation qualifications for the rapture and escape from the great tribulation in luke chapter 21 in luke chapter 21 from verse 36 luke 21 verse 36 watch ye therefore and pray always that she may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the son of man it says you need to watch and you need to pray you need to watch and you need to pray so that you'll be able to escape all these things that shall come to pass you see brothers and sisters we need to watch when Esau was not watching Jacob demanded of him to give him his birthright for a mess of pottage and if you are not watching there are situations today that will try to take your birthright from you and you will say like Esau I am hungry to the point of death what will this birthright do me and you sell your birthright like that you see there are times it may be because of marriage it may be because of children it may be because of sickness it may be that for example you are sick and as you are sick you have tried everything you can try that is permissible and you are prayed and it appears the sickness is still there and then your people might say well as you are like this why should we just be looking at you like this and you will just die in our presence like this well although we know that your church will not agree with you after all that your church they are praying and you are not well yet and look at you the way you are suffering and uh, the medication or spiritual has not been able to help you so uh, why don't we take you to such and such a place at the back side of the village in a shrine so that they will do this and do ah you say if i do that it means backsliding they will say but look at the suffering look at what you are going through can't you repent after that has taken place there are people that have gone like that to take all those things and while they are there they die in the place of the herbalist and there are people who will come back to the church and say hey, your brother has died and uh, then uh, the church begins to debate and some people say let us take our stand so that it will teach other people lesson that if anybody backslides and goes to be with the unbelieving people and dies in the abbey's place that this church will not bury the individual other people will rise up and say let us be careful of what we're doing because he who is going to die has died and uh, all his relatives if we have the funeral for them never minding what the other fellow has done that may make them to come to our church and that may make them if we care and if we love and if we go if we forget standard and forget doctrine and forget you know to serve this one as a deterrent to other people let's forget all that and let us rally around at this time because you know that burial and funeral is a very serious thing in our country well the church may even compromise and they bury such individual but i tell you that individual is going to the negative to the left side to hell fire because he died with a soul given to the herbalist and so that is why we need to be careful it says watch and pray we need to watch because you see this is a difficult time not only in your country it's a difficult time all over africa you see war has been going on for more than 15 years in mozambique what are we going to say there are believers too there we even have deeper life there i just saw the national overseer from mozambique uh, you know just last week and with joy he was telling me of how things are taking shape there how people are getting converted and you'll be surprised some of the things we sent to them like even cases like this like that they don't even see them because you see when it gets to the place because of the one because of everything they take everything from them they just take everything and distribute on their own 
and so they are not able to even receive anything and they are in that war torn country and yet there are people there they are enduring now but you know all that is nothing compared with the great tribulation watch and don't say look at the condition in our country because of this condition maybe we have to do this that we are not doing before we have to do this that we are not doing before it's just like what our pastor was explaining to us just now the question time because of this difficult situation in which we are now there are some pastors that will say well things are hard now and if we don't get vigilance, we are going to become vigilant upon these people. What, what will I eat as a pastor? And so they have all this list upon paper. And, uh, you know, they give to the secretary and say, everyone here, whether they are born again or not, once they are coming to this church, they must bring that thing. You know that thing? <laughs> okay, and so the secretary will say, what's your name? How much did you put there? And mark. And mark. And mark. I don't know whether the ones they don't mark they will, on Sunday, they will give me those names, the ones that you have not marked. So and so, wait behind, have your debt to pay. And so we announce here, we announce here, we announce here, we announce there. And then we call them. Why is it you are stealing from God and stealing from the church? And you have not paid your tithe. We have not seen your record. So during this week, let us see your hand, not empty hand, and go and mark your register. You see, because of the conditions... Let us watch upon ourselves. It may be we'll say it is because I'm suffering. It is because of hunger. It is because of poverty. My brothers and sisters, watch and pray. Let us watch on all our actions. You know, if there's anything the church needs to watch, it is this, our mouth. This, our mouth, can take us away from heaven and take us to hellfire. This, our mouth alone, can spoil all our consecration. This, our mouth, can gossip about Moses, can gossip about Aaron, can gossip about anyone and everyone. If we're not watching over our mouth, do you know that uh, we're told that the men, they speak 25,000 words every day. And women speak 30,000 words every day. Well, they have more number. They have more to tell. There are many, many things they are thinking about. And many of those 25,000 words and 30,000 words, they are words that lead us astray. We are either criticizing so-and-so, gossiping about that our sister in the choir, gossiping about those people that are planning their wedding. Let us watch over our mouth. Watch and pray. Now the prayer we are talking about here that Jesus was talking about, it is not, oh God, I have a headache, heal me. A person can get healed and still go to hell. Watch and pray. Pray that you will overcome temptation. Pray that you will endure to the very end. Pray that whatever is happening, nothing will take you out of this place. Uh, you know, even if you are not allowed to be a preacher in a church like this, just to allow you to come and sit down and hear the word of God. That should be enough. To prepare you for the rapture. You know there are some people that will say. Well uh, why am I going to that church? The, the roster of preaching never gets to me. And if they are going to call people to do this and that. It never gets to me. And so I am going to go to another place. Watch and pray. Pray over that tendency. To run here and run here and run there and rush there. You know, there are people, they are attracted by what is going on outside the fence. They see that uh, probably there are some people that are able to gather crowd. And these people will have large, large meetings. And these people are interested. They are in deeper life here. They say, well, look at my congregation, only 50 only 76 only uh, 82 that are here and you know all these other people that are ministering they have large large crowd i want to go and find out how they get their large crowd and then we we'll write uh, a little letter to our overseer we we'll say overseer i thank the lord for all the time i've been in deeper life i praise the lord for all that you have taught me i've learned a lot from your life i've learned a lot from your administration i've learned a lot from everything you are doing but now god is giving me a call and this call, the Lord has shown me, it cannot be fulfilled here. I want to go and fulfill it outside the fence. And then you, the overseer will call you and say, My brother, we offended you. 
Is there, is there something that we have done which you don't want to tell us about? In what way have we treated you? So no, it's not at all. In fact, I appreciate you. I remember the time you cared for me, the remember the time you cared for this and cared for that. Only that God is giving me a call. And this call cannot be fulfilled here. Because, you know, the reason why the call cannot be fulfilled here, because all those things that are done to gather crowd together is not done here. Because we don't allow the people to have the license to wear all these things the Bible goes against, or to pump their air, or to have all this worldliness and everything, and to bring all the drums, and to bring all the things that will attract the young people. We want to let the word of God and the spirit of God to attract the people. Because you are thinking, if I do that in the church, if I allow those people their jewelry and I baptize them in water, if I allow this one and that one, they are going to get me into trouble. Therefore, the way I can come out of it is that I have received a call. And then you go. And the first time you go, all those people that have been seeing gathering crowd, you go and interview them. You say, uh, how does somebody join your ministry? How does somebody walk along with you? I've been coming from deeper life. The moment they hear that you are coming from deeper life, they won't interview you. They say, have this church immediately. And then you relax. Watch. Many people have gone like that. And they will say, pray for me. If things are not okay, God knows I'm sincere. I will come back. At least for now, I believe I have the call of God. If things are not like that again, I will come back. Many people who promise they will come back, they have not come back. And we see them. You see them. And you're told, you say, brother, things are not working well. You know it. I see some of the people you are moving with. Things are not working well. And you say the things are not working well, you will come back. And you will be saying, hey, it doesn't matter. Is it only deeper life that will get to heaven? No, it's not only deeper life. It's not even everybody in deeper life that will get to heaven. But if in deeper life, where we emphasize the Bible and preach everything. If not everybody gets to heaven, what's going to happen outside the fence? If the, if the righteous scarcely be saved, what will be the end of the people that are not even righteous? If those of us that all the time there's workers retreat, there's general retreat, there is everything. If all of us are not able to make it, you tell me where there's no workers retreat, where there's no general retreat, where there's no discipline, where there's nothing at all. If where we are strict like this, we still get people who can backslide. What is happening in the places where they're not strict? The majority are gone away from the kingdom of God and they don't even know it. My brother, watch your life. You see, as a preacher, I have to watch myself. Because you see, if you don't watch yourself, do you remember Moses? That's why I watch myself. Moses was that great, great man of God. And then the people were thirsty, they wanted water. And the first time he gave them water according to the word of God. And then eventually, do you know what happened? Here was Moses. And then here were the people asking for water. And here was the rock. And God said, speak to the rock. And Moses forgot himself. We can forget ourselves. You see, when there's turbulence in your heart, when there's anger in your heart, when there is something displeasure in your heart, you can forget yourself. And then he lifted up the rod and struck it two times and said, you rebels, shall we bring water out of the rock for you? Water came out. Miracle is no problem. If you are looking at it on the miracle side, after I see the power of God with me, that's not the final thing. And after the people drank water, then God called Moses and said, Moses, can I tell you something? Because of that thing, you will not get to that land. And Moses said, God, don't be strict like that. Sorry. Don't do like that to me. It's these people. And Moses said he fasted again 40 days. How many days can you fast? And even after those 40 days, God said, Moses, all I can do for you. Come up. Look at the land. Get on this mountain. See it. But that's all. And he died, and then God buried him there. Watch yourself. Watch yourself. Do you remember Samson? Here was Samson with the great mighty power of God upon his life. And with the mighty power upon his life, he began to just, you know, double into things. And eventually he went into this place, you know the story. And this man of God, with the power of God, leaned his own head. Think about it. The head of the Nazarite leaned it upon the lives of that woman until this woman shaped the air with the help of those feelings and shaped the air away and all the power was gone watch yourself 
You have to watch yourself. Look at Gideon. Gideon was that individual that had this great mighty success. And while he defeated those people, then he took their idol and came back to his land. Great mighty victory, but when he was coming back, he came back with idol. Watch yourself. You see, Peter, the apostle, he said, If all men deny you, I will never deny you. Watch your boasting. Because we are told, even a little maid came and said, You are one of them. And they began to curse. Somebody who had been to the Mount of Transfiguration. Somebody who had walked on the sea. Somebody who had distributed the multiplied food. He began with an oath to say, If I ever knew him, watch yourself. The mighty are falling already. Who am I and who are you? But you know, if you are watching yourself and always holding on to the cross and saying, God, I want to make it, they may knock me in this church, they may discipline me in this church, they may rebuke me in this church, they may quote the Bible at me, in this, they may even use me as an example, and even quote my name and my region and my location and mention my name and even announce my name, but Lord, I will never leave the foot of the cross. Even when I'm humiliated, even when I'm bent low, even when it appears all things are all against me. Lord, I'm not looking for position, I'm only looking for heaven. I know it will be over one day when the trumpet shall sound. All our tears will be over. All our suffering will be over. All the discipline will be over. All the training will be over. And then shall we rise and we'll go with the Lord. We don't know when that day will be. But then we remember the song, number three, in our own hymn book, Impatient Heart, Be Still. What though the Lord tarries long, we know that he will, it will, he will come one day. It says, my eager heart, my anxious heart, be still. It may not be today, and yet my soul it may. It may be in the morning or at noon. Whenever it will be, I know he will surely come to take me to his home. And because I know he will take me to his home, I want to be patient now. In my marriage, I want to be patient. In my wanting to become a pastor, or wanting to become this and that, I want to be patient. In wanting children, I want to be patient. In wanting salary, I want to be patient. In wanting this, I want to be patient. In patient heart, be still. The Lord is coming. And we don't know when that Lord will come. But my prayer for you is that whenever it will be, you'll be ready in Jesus' name. What a, what a joy it will be on that wonderful and final day. If as the rapture takes place like this, we're all caught up. I may not be here. I may be in Nigeria. Some of you may be in Liberia. Some of you may be in the Gambia. Some of us may be in other places. And immediately the rapture takes place like this. And the first thing we're looking for, where is brother so-and-so? Where is that sister in the choir? Where is that interpreter over there? Where is that person that used to walk in the kitchen? Where is that person that used to play the organ? Where is that person that used to help us recording all these things? What joy it will be at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. I see those brothers. I see those sisters. I see those interpreters. I see everyone. And we, we, we look at the road when the road is called up yonder. And those overseers, I say, where is that overseer? Where is that overseer? And then then we're all there and there were tears of joy in our faces. We begin to say all the tribulation and all the persecution and all the poverty and all the evil things that we went through did not stop us from getting to that place. We don't know when it will be but my prayer for you is that you'll be ready in Jesus name. And I want you to rise up and you tell the Lord you want to be ready for that glorious day. You want to be ready for that wonderful time because that will be the final result of our worshiping God. Let's get ready for that time. Let's get ready for that time. Let's get ready for that time. I'm so excited today because God has been so faithful to me. I'm going to keep this very short. First of all, I want to thank God for the church. The church has been my family. Um, thank you so much, Pastor Dada. He has been a father to me. I don't start crying. Okay, um, I remember I came here without um, scholarship to Harvard University. The first year wasn't easy, but I got a grant that paid half of my tuition. But then from second year, I got like five different scholarships from my department. So I just thank God. Third year, the same thing. And I thank God because I'll be graduating in May. I didn't 